Hi there, I'm Molly Wood reporting from CNET headquarters in San Francisco. Welcome to Planet CNET, where we bring you reports from CNET editors around the globe. First stop this week, here, actually just a few blocks from here where I covered the unveiling of Apple's next generation iPhone. Ooh. Steve Jobs has just finished giving the keynote address where we saw the introduction of a brand new iPhone. It will feature 3G and GPS. And of course, since this is a developer's conference, we also got a peek at some of the software that will be running on that iPhone in the future. Let's take a look. And today we're introducing the iPhone 3G. First, the moment everyone was waiting for, the iPhone finally got 3G and with it, faster data speeds. The 3G version downloads in five seconds and the Edge version in 18 seconds. That is 3.6 times faster on the 3G version. A few moments later, it also got GPS. And here we are driving down Lombard Street and we can actually track as we move using GPS. So it's kind of fun. Then the iPhone got a whole lot cheaper. For one ninety nine. At a hundred at just hundred and ninety nine dollars, we think the iPhone 3G is going to be affordable to almost everyone. And that's for the eight gig model. The sixteen gig model, just two ninety nine. Earlier in the keynote, Steve Jobs touted the enterprise support built into the iPhone 2.0 software and showed off some other improvements. Everything everybody's asked for built in and we've gotten tremendous feedback from enterprise users that we are on exactly the right track and we know we can now check off enterprise support. Apple exec Steve Forstall introduced a string of developers to show off some of the third-party apps that'll be available on the iPhone. Apparently, it can even turn you into a brain surgeon. I learned five new brain terms this morning while I was waiting in line for my latte. And Jobs announced a replacement service for .Mac called MobileMe. An email gets sent to me in my MobileMe account. It immediately gets pushed to all my devices. My phone, my computers all have the latest email. iPhone fans didn't get everything on their wish list. For example, Steve Jobs did not announce video capture, multimedia messaging, or a flash for that camera. But we'll see what they think of the price drop when the iPhone comes out on July 11th. It's a great job. To date, the current iPhone, that old clunker, is available in only six countries. But by the end of the year, the iPhone 3G will be on sale in 70 countries. Here in the U.S., we'll get it on July 11th, along with Japan, Hong Kong, Mexico, Canada, and much of Europe. Which brings me to our next segment. It's from CNET London, where Rory Reed joined forces with CNET New York to defy space and time, and hopefully to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Fast forward to the year 2008 and Paul St. George has completed his grandfather's vision. He's delivered what the world now knows as the Telectroscope, a device that miraculously lets you see people on the other side of the world. Thanks to the miracle of a giant tunnel. I'm, I'm sorry, a tunnel? Are you serious? Okay, I'm a bit dubious. It might just be a webcam and a copy of Skype, but I'm going to call my friend in New York, the world-famous Natalie Del Conte, and find out if this thing's actually for real. some move the old the old the old, old, old break dance. So oh, there you have it, the telectroscope actually does work. I'm not sure whether it's a real tunnel or fiber optics or magic pixies. The fact is, it works and it works really, really well. It's not necessarily a technological breakthrough, but it's a fantastic piece of modern interactive art that really does bring two attractive single people together. 
I'm Rory Reid with a little bit of help from Natalie Zelconti for Planet Seen It. Aw, he loves her. But that would be one long distance relationship. Now on to Japan, a land of gadgets, and in this case, cooking gadgets. Hi, I'm Kiori Yamoto from Japan. Today I'm standing here in my kitchen, which is a typical one in Japan, I think. Today I would like to show you some home appliances which I use in Japan here. First, this is the rice cooker which I use to cook my supper every night. And this is the electric kettle for serving teas. And this is what I bought recently, a home bakery machine. For people who love fresh baked bread, Panasonic provides excellent automatic features. All you have to do is put the ingredients like flour, butter, sugar, skim milk powder, salt, water, yeast, nuts into the container, close the lid, and press the buttons. You can wake up with the smell of fresh baked bread. This machine can do more than just baked bread. This can also cook fresh Japanese food. For example, it makes rice cakes, an important food in Japanese culture. Also, this makes Japanese wheat noodle dough. The machine does all the tough kneading process, so all you have to do is to roll out the dough and cut into noodles and boil them. We have instant rice cakes and rehydratable noodles in Japan, so nowadays we don't cook rice cakes or noodles ourselves so much. But it is fun to make food from its ingredients once in a while, and these are really delicious. I just want Sina to send me to Japan just one time. Just one time, bosses, please. I need to try those rice cakes. And on that note, that's it for this episode. See you next time on Planet CNET.